action, get in action, come with me and let's explore. Get in action, get in action, come with me through the open door. Get in action, get in action, let's get into God's world. Hey, welcome to Kids Connection. Yeah. Today we're gonna talk about a testimony. A testimony? Yeah. Yeah, you know, a testimony is when you tell the story of how you became a Christian. In our story today, we're going to hear the testimony of the Apostle Paul, who's also sometimes called Saul. We're going to also talk about Jews and Gentiles. Remember, the Jews were God's special people who had set apart to show the world who he was. And the word Gentile just means anyone who is not a Jew. Listen to Paul's testimony and how God changes Paul's heart. And hear how other people respond. Now, here's our story. Our story starts with Paul coming into Jerusalem. Acts chapter 21 verse 18 says, The following day Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. After reading them, he reported in detail what God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. When they heard it, they glorified God. Then, in verse 26, it says, So the next day, Paul took the men, having purified himself along with them, and entered the temple, announcing the completion of the purification days, when the offering would be made for each of them. When the seven days were nearly over, some of the Jews from the province of Asia saw him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd, and seized him, shouting, Fellow Israelites, help! This is the man who teaches everyone everywhere against our people, our law, and this place. Verse 31 says, As they were trying to kill him, word went up to the commander of the regiment that all Jerusalem was in chaos. Taking along soldiers and centurions, he immediately ran down to them. Seeing the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the commander approached, took him into custody, and ordered him to be bound with two chains. Verse 37 says, As he was about to be brought to, into the barracks, Paul said to the commander, Am I allowed to say something to you? He replied, You know how to speak Greek? Aren't you the Egyptian who started the revolt some time ago and led 4,000 men of the assassins into the wilderness? Paul said, I am a Jewish man from Tarsus of Cilicia, a citizen of an important city. Now I ask you, let me speak to the people. After he had given permission, Paul stood on the steps and motioned with his hand to the people. When there was a hush, he addressed them in Aramaic. Brothers and fathers, listen now to my defense before you. When they heard that he was addressing them in Aramaic, they became even quieter. He continued, I am a Jew, born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strictest of our ancestral law. I was zealous for God, just as all of you are today. I persecuted this way to death, and arrested and putting both men and women in jail, as both the high priest and the whole council of elders can testify about me. After I received letters from them to the brothers, I traveled to Damascus to arrest those who were there and bring them to Jerusalem to be punished. As I was traveling and approaching Damascus, about noon an intense light from heaven suddenly flashed round me, and I fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I asked, Who are you, Lord? He said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, the one you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but they did not hear the voice of the one who was speaking to me. I said, What should I do, Lord? The Lord told me, Get up and go to, into Damascus, and there you will be told everything that you have been assigned to do. Since I couldn't see because of the brightness of the light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me, and went into Damascus, someone named Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, who had a good reputation with all the Jews living there, came and stood by me and said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. And in that very hour, I looked up and saw him. And he said, The God of our ancestors has appointed you to know his will, 
to see the righteous one, and to hear the words from his mouth, since you will be a witness for him to all people of what you have seen and heard. And now, why are you delaying? Get up and be baptized, and wash away your sins, calling on his name. After I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw him telling me, Hurry and get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. But I said, Lord, they know that in the synagogue after synagogue I had those who believed in you imprisoned and beaten. And when the blood of your witness Stephen was being shed, I stood there giving approval and guarding the clothes of those who killed him. He said to me, Go, because I will send you far away to the Gentiles. The crowd listened to him up to this point. Then they raised their voices, shouting, Wipe this man off the face of the earth. He should not be allowed to live. Well, Tommy, what happened next? Don't get ahead of me, Fred. Sorry. It's okay. Our story started out with Paul telling one group of Jews how he had been telling the Gentile people about Jesus. So the Jews were God's chosen people, and the Gentiles were anybody that was not a Jew? That's right. The group of Jews that Paul told at first had believed in Jesus as the Messiah, as the Savior. Oh, I bet they were glad to hear the Gentiles had believed in Jesus, too. You're right. After that, Paul goes to the temple, and there there are Jews who had not yet believed in Jesus. They were not happy about what Paul was doing, so Paul explained to them what he was doing by giving his testimony. But at the end of the story, they were still mad at Paul even though he told them about Jesus. That's true. Part of it might have been some misunderstanding, but it's clear that this group did not like Paul telling the Gentiles about Jesus. Hey, that reminds me of the story of Jonah. How Jonah didn't want God to forgive the Ninevites. You're right, friend. Maybe these Jews didn't want God to forgive the Gentiles. Because, well, maybe the Gentiles had been not very nice to them. That's still horrible. But tell us whatever happened to Paul. The people seemed really mad. Well, Paul would get a chance to tell his testimony again and again. Oh, that's good. But he would be a prisoner. Oh, that's bad. Well, you might think so, but Paul realized something. The good news about Jesus is such good news that it's worth it. Sometimes people will rejoice to hear it. Sometimes people will get mad, raise their voice, and shout because they don't want to hear it. But that should never stop us from telling others the good news about Jesus' love and that Jesus came to save us from our sins. Fish jokes? Yeah, fish jokes are funny. Okay. All right, here we go. First one. What? Why don't fish play soccer? I don't know. Because they're afraid of the net. <laughs> anyway, how about this one? What do you get when you cross a shark and a snowman? I don't know. Frostbite. <laughs> you get a frostbite. Ah, frostbite is pretty good. Hey, Tommy. What? I got a joke for you. Okay, let's hear it. Let's hear it, Fred. What's a goopy stuff between a shark's teeth? I don't, I, I don't know, Fred. 
What? What is it? Slow swimmers. <laughs> oh, that's horrible, Fred. It's a good laugh. All right, we'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> that's pretty good. Slow swimmers. <laughs>